sketch you might actually have um, where you want to apply aquatint which is going to be um, areas of value in your image in my case um, I don't have it planned yet um, so I actually did a took a photocopy of my um, line etching and now I'm going to work into it with a graphite pencil to figure out where I want to block in my aquatint layers. Um, I like to plan a lot in advance um, just because again it's like when we're applying the aquatint to the plate you'll see it's like this kind of um, negative positive uh, and it helps me to plan at first where I want the um, aquatint to go so that when I'm on my plate, I can just transfer directly what I've drawn and I kind of know what my image is gonna look like. So right now I'm just going to um, sketch in where I think that I want um, areas of value and you can get different um, levels of value. So you can get lighter grays to darker grays. Um, so it's good to plan out where you want those as well to start. Preparing your plate for aquatint is similar to preparing your plate to receive hard ground. So make sure that it's nice and degreased. So again, vinegar, whiting, lather it into a paste. Wash it off. Dry it off and repeat. For aquatint, you want to make doubly sure that your plate is nice and degreased. So don't be afraid to overdo it. All right, it should be good. off and again try not to handle it too much when your plate is dry as the oil from your hand will transfer to the plate and to finish it off just a nice little wipe with denatured alcohol. Ta-da! All right, so I'm ready to start planning out and stopping out on my plate areas where I don't want aquatint. So this can be a little tricky and confusing because you have to think in reverse. Um, this is the um, plan that I have done where I would like to put aquatint. Um, so basically now I am going to be putting stop out or like a, this really like thick hard ground in areas that I want to keep white and then leaving the copper plate exposed in areas that I want to apply aquatint. Um, and then I will show you how to apply aquatint. So I'm having to think in reverse. I'm gonna put stop out, you know, in this white area that I wanna keep white around her face and then anywhere that there's a highlight and, um, you know, the entirety of the background of the plate. I'm gonna paint in stop out. Um, so I have a couple different size brushes and then I have this um, thickened 
um, hard ground that I'm going to use. And this stuff can be really stinky, so you know if you need to pull over the ventilation, go for it. Um, it's gonna take a little bit like that. And again, it just goes on like paint. Um, so again, painting around areas that I want white, I'm paying close attention to my sketch. best I can. And again, leaving open the areas that I want to apply value to and painting over areas that I want to remain white. And I like to move from left to right so that, um, you know, my hand isn't hovering over a, um, area that I've painted hard ground. Um, it's also a good idea to either fold over your piece of newsprint or put a piece of paper over your hand so that you can rest it there um, and that you're not getting the natural oils from your hand uh, onto your plate. Because that will affect the adhesion of the uh, um, aqua tint to your plate. <laughs> I'm going in with the more delicate brush to get some of these more refined areas. Make sure to turn on the ventilation pan fan when you're going to use the hot plate. And then after a few minutes on the hot plate, you kind of test it to see it might be a little bit tacky. Um, but when you feel like it's for the most part dry, you can take it off, let it cool, and then you're ready to apply your aqua tint. When you're not using the hot plate, turn off the ventilation fan. If you're finished using the hot plate entirely, you can shut off the hot plate. Make sure to turn on the ventilation for the spray booth before using spray paint. All right, so I've placed a um, clean sheet of newsprint in the spray booth and pinned it up. And then I'm gonna place my plate at a slight angle against the back. And this is gonna be able to tell me um, my coverage of Aquatint. And we're gonna be using a spray paint method of Aquatint. So make sure you shake it well. Sometimes I'll even like spray a bit off to the side to make sure that there's no chunks in the nozzle and that um, it's gonna give a nice even spray. If there's large chunks coming out, those will land on your plate and affect your aqua tint um, because effectively what we're trying to do is make a light spattering of dots from the spray paint um, so that when we place it into the acid, the acid will eat around those dots um, and create this lovely gray tone. Um, so we're going for about like 50% coverage um, and there's also, there's a few other methods of Aquatint. Um, there's the spray paint method, which is super easy um, and accessible. Just make sure you're using it with the spray booth or you're outside. Um, you can use the, um, there's a rosin method, but that's not really good for you because rosin is super toxic. Um, and then there's also the airbrush method, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do this today because um, it's the easiest and most accessible. So what you're gonna wanna do is stand, you know, a lot further back than you normally would if you were spray painting something um, and spray towards your plate, but in a sweeping motion. So back and forth, back and forth, because we don't want um, to concentrate the particles in any one area. We want a nice, even coverage.
right? So stop, let it evaporate. And another method is to actually lay your plate flat and aim into the booth and let the particles fall onto your plate. And then I'm gonna go check after the particles have evaporated up here to see the coverage. So you can kind of see that there's like more coverage down here than up here. So I'm actually going to flip my plate like this um, to ensure that I'm gonna get the same amount of coverage up here as I'm getting down here. Um, and so we're starting to get there. You can see there's like this nice fine dusting of particles. Um, and this is gonna be the equivalent as to what's on your plate. cover your entire plate with like a super thick coverage because then there's not going to be any space for the acid to eat away around those marks. Alright, so that is looking pretty good to me. And this is what the coverage looks like um, on my plate. So you can see it's a nice, like, even gray. Um, there's still some space around the particles for the acid to eat away at. And now we're ready to put it in the acid. Don't forget to shut off the spray booth fan when you're finished with it. All right, so I'm applying that about 12 to 16 inch tail to the back of my plate so that I can retrieve it. Place it on the back of my plate. Turn on the ventilation fan. Grab my gloves. And now I'm looking at this etch chart um, to determine how long I want to leave my plate in the acid bath. So I want a, like a pretty light gray for my um, light gray. So I, I want to go in between one and two minutes. I think I'm going to leave it in two minutes and start with that and then I'm going to take it out, wash it off, um, and then stop out areas that I want to keep that light gray and then put the acid bath in for another like probably like six minutes to get that darker gray. Put my gloves on. Open up the acid bath. Put my plate in, again facing out. Now I'm going to set my timer for two minutes. Alright, after two minutes, put your gloves back on. Pull your plate out. Let it drip dry. And I want to be careful when I'm washing out the acid. I don't want to scrub the plate because I don't want to remove the um, spray paint particles. So I'm going to be very delicate. And either let it air dry or I'm going to um, dab it dry with paper towel. So very carefully lay it down. Okay. 
So when it's dry, um, I'm ready to go in and block off the areas that I want to keep light gray and keep exposed the areas that I want to etch for longer and become um, a darker gray. Again, referencing my drawing, seeing the stop out. to keep that light gray. We'll put it back on the hot plate to dry quickly, wash our brushes, and then put it back in for another six to seven minutes. All right, so when your stop out has dried, you're ready to put your plate back in the acid bath for the desired amount of time. I think I might go a little bit longer. I think I might actually do, um, an extra seven minutes. So set your timer and then we'll come back, pull it out, clean the hard ground off, and then do a proof. <laughs> 